This video demonstrates some code for implementing optimal predictive control. So far then, this chapter has developed both an OMPC and an SOMPC algorithm for the state space case and assuming no uncertainty, no constraints and for a regulation scenario that is um, going to zero. What we want to do next is to develop some code so we can illustrate and test whether this approach is indeed simple to implement and effective to apply and so on. It would also be interesting to explore the cost function and investigate is this indeed a Lyapunov function as we expect. And finally we might want to look in particular at the SOMPC and see how does that change as we change the control horizon NC. Suboptimal dual mode MPC then or SOMPC. What you do <coughs> is you take the dual mode predictions based around the implementation of an arbitrary and there's a keyword here stabilizing regulator and some perturbations. So you'll notice in mode one our predictions have the form u equals minus kx plus c and in the terminal mode u equals minus kx. We're going to optimize the predicted performance with respect to these perturbations C and implement the first value. So there's our performance index. We minimize it with respect to these values C. Now, there's a particular note here at the bottom which is quite important. If this K parameter, this feedback, is the LQR regulator for this J, then we're going to call this algorithm OMPC not SOMPC because in that case it won't be suboptimal. Optimization. So the performance index can be minimized or reduced to this form which we've covered in detail and consequently in the unconstrained case you can find that the optimizing C future is given by this formula here and the optimal feedback law is given by this form here. If we combine those two together then essentially you can form this feedback parameter here which I'm going to call KSOMPC and that's your optimized feedback law. What we want to do is demonstrate some code which computes and utilizes this compensator and look at it for different NC. First then let's start with video 48 example 1. So we open up our MATLAB as normal. There it is. So here we have example one and you'll notice the first thing we do is enter our system as normal. Now what the code does next, you might want to look at this more slowly yourself, is first of all we've got a file here called chapter four OMPC and underscore simulate. So that will simulate this OMPC law for the regulation case. And you'll notice it's fairly obvious what arguments it needs. It needs the model ABCD, the control horizon NC, Q and R, which define the performance index, Q2 and R2, which are used to define the terminal mode regulator, initial condition, and a runtime. So we can use that file to run our SOMPC control law. So we do that and do that for various values of NC, and we'll plot the figures in a minute. And then we also can use a similar piece of code in order to extract the compensator KSOMPC. So we do that at the bottom and then figure two will plot the parameters of these. So if I run this whole file then we get two figures and you'll see in figure one you see the output and here for NC equals two and clearly the output's convergent as you expect. So you say okay this is stabilizing that's good. The second figure, maybe I'll make these slightly taller, shows the cost function and clearly this cost function is monotonic as expected. And the last figure here shows the value of CK. Now for OMPC we expected CK to be zero and indeed you look down here and you see CK is zero. If we calculate the parameters of this compensator KSOMPC because here we've chosen the terminal mode to match the performance index, then this k is not going to change and you see the parameters are the same for all values of nc. So we'll go here and just summarize that. So if we do OMPC, which is what's in video 48 example 1, we observe the cost is clearly monotonic as we expected. The responses are convergent 
as we expected, the perturbation C are zero, as we expected, and the compensator K S O M P C is in fact, I should perhaps write that to make that clear, is in fact K O M P C because we're not doing the optimal case, um, and therefore that's equal to K and it does not change. What about video 48 <coughs> example 2 then? And this one is looking at the suboptimal case. <coughs> so if we go to example 2, and in this one you'll notice we choose R2 not equal to R. So what we're doing is we're getting an SOMPC simulation. So if we run that file, then what do you notice again? You'll see the outputs converge, so it's stabilizing as expected. You see the cost function J is monotonic as we expected, a Lyapunov function. But here's an interesting one. If we look at the parameters C, they are not equal to zero. And you'll also notice that there isn't a neat pattern. So if I look at sample K, or I'll start with K plus one in fact, which is this one here, which I've got the R over, you'll notice the optimized C at K plus one followed a pattern a bit like this. It went to zero after five steps or four steps because NC is four. So had that particular pattern. If I then go one sample further ahead, K plus two, obviously I start one sample further ahead, that's here, and I move along, and then it goes down here. And you will see it's not the same in the entirety. It's quite similar for the first few moves, but it's not the same along the whole way. So this is an example of I've changed my mind slightly. I've said, oh, what I thought was a good sequence, I've now updated it. If I now go to, say, K plus 4, for example, I think that should say K plus 3, you can see all the time we keep updating our decisions and getting a slightly different proposal. And therefore, it's a bit like changing our mind. And that's how I know that this SOMPC algorithm is suboptimal, because it does keep changing its mind. If you look at the parameters, K, S, O, M, P, C, and plot them against the control horizon, you find for zero, you get a particular compensator. And then as you increase NC, you will find the compensator parameters change, but they don't change much beyond NC equals two. You can see a small change from NC equals one to two, and here you can see a small change, but beyond that, the changes are not really observable. So for this example, it's converged to a fixed compensator fairly quickly. So if we summarize that, the cost is clearly monotonic, the responses are convergent, the perturbations are not zero, that's the C terms, and can be very large, and the changes in the optimized C, they change from one sample to the next. Okay. And you'll notice that K S O M P C is quite close to K O M P C even for N C equals one. Now I should emphasize here the whole idea is that you can edit these files. If you want to play around, you can edit these files. You can change A, you can change B, C, you can change Q, R, and C. It should be transparent how to do that if you go into this code. So you can change the files and very quickly see what happens as I make my own choices. What about example three then? So the difference with example three is that this is a multivariable system. But otherwise, we're going to have similar patterns. So let's go to example three. And let's run this one. So in example three, again, you can see the outputs converge. As expected, it's stabilizing. If you look at the cost function, you see it's convergent um, and it's monotonic. So it's Lyapunov as expected. Again, if you look at the optimized C values, you can see they keep changing. So you have an optimized C at one sample and then the optimized C at the next sample is not the same pattern. So this is illustrating that I keep changing my mind when I get my new degree of freedom and say, oh, I can do even better, oh, I can do even better. So that suggests that your original optimization wasn't close to optimum in the first place. And you can see that clearly in this bottom left curve where the original C went to zero after five samples. But when you do this recursive decision making, you end up with a C which doesn't get to zero until about 15 or 16 samples. So it's very different indeed. If we look at the KSOMPC parameters, you can see now, they, for this example, they take quite a while to converge. But by the time you get to NC equals 10, the parameters have just about converged. And if you looked, you'd find they're converging to KOMPC. 
So summary of the observations, the cost is monotonic again, as expected. The responses are convergent, as expected. The perturbation terms CK are not zero and can be substantive. Um, KSOMPC is quite close to KMPC and gets closer as NC increases. But there's clearly SOMPC has the same weakness as GPC. There's a mismatch between the predictions and the implementation because you keep changing your mind when you re-optimize. So some conclusions. As expected, both OMPC and SOMPC are stabilizing and the numerical examples have a monotonic cost function. So that's important because we couldn't say that for GPC unless we used infinite horizons. So here we have a guarantee that these algorithms are stabilizing. As expected, the optimized perturbations for OMPC are zero. SOMPC gives non-zero perturbations because your terminal mode isn't the optimal controller. And so although it is possibly, and I'm not going to say definitely, an improvement on GPC, and that's because you've got guaranteed stability, you can argue it has similar conceptual weaknesses due to the mismatch between predictions and the implementation with low NC. And that's something we're going to revisit in a later chapter. The SOMPC feedback, however, does tend towards OMPC for large NC. And possible reasons for actually wanting to use an algorithm which seems to have this built-in mismatch will come later.